Well, hello and happy Monday to everyone out there. Welcome to Play Games Spread Joy. I'm Jaybird the Word, aka Justin, Jaybird, whatever you want to call me. I'm here to play some games and spread some joy. Hopefully, joy to, for you as well. Now, it's Monday. Everyone might have had a hectic Monday, a manic Monday. Maybe you might say a horrific Monday. But we're going to turn that around into a horrified Monday. Playing a game of horrified American monsters. Now, today I'll be playing the solo mode against both the Mothman and the Banshee of the Badlands. These are both characters I have not played against yet. Um, I've only played one game of this, and it was a five-player game against three monsters. We lost horribly. Didn't even defeat one monster. So I decided to step back a bit, turn back to easy mode, and relax and have some fun on this Monday evening. So wherever you are, I hope you enjoy. Um, if you want to play along, uh, suggest some moves as you watch along. Um, maybe talk to me about if you've played already, how you feel about the game, if you've played the original Horrified. Ask some questions about that as I've played that a few times, but probably not enough to give a huge comparison, uh, but enough to know that in general, this plays the same, but with slightly new mechanics for each monster. Um, it's a new main map, but overall the general uh, you move, monster card drawn, and resolve from there is the same general concept as from Horrified. So with that, let's just jump on into it, have some fun tonight, um, and play the game. Because that's what we're here for, to play the games. Uh, as you can see, I have a slightly different setup than usual. I tried to change my cameras around to make it a little bit easier for everyone to see what I'm uh, doing and playing as. Now, I've already done some pre-setup on this, but for those who have not played before, you typically will select between two to four monsters to play against. I have the two mats, one for the Mothman at the bottom and one for the Banshee of the Badlands at the top already set up. Each one has slightly different rules. The Banshee uses a violin for each uh, player that you put on its mat so I, since I'm playing as a red character I put the red violin on that mat already and then the Mothman you actually draw four random tokens from the bag putting it on its mat as long as there are four different locations and at those four locations you place these trap tokens um, already closed because you're trying to arm them and then uh, essentially arm all four trap him and defeat the Mothman during this game and then also as part of the setup, I've placed the Mothman and Banshee in their starting locations per the rules. Currently the Mothman is at the motel, Banshee at the cemetery for their starting locations. And then drawn 12 random tokens and placed them at their locations per the setup rules. I've also shuffled uh, both the monster and the uh, blanket on the name of that deck at the moment. Uh, it's basically a... Uh, let's just it's a perk card which actually I should have drawn one uh, I should have a random one to start the game with so we'll do that now so I'll be able to use this at my leisure on my turn I can make it easier to read in a moment uh, let's try it on this camera this is the advantage on the trail card the current player takes two additional actions so when I choose to on my turn, I could take two additional actions. Now, because I'm playing as the journalist, typically I will have five actions uh, I can do each each round. As you can see on here, it has a five, but I have no special action. So I have that additional action instead of special actions. I figured for the first solo game of this and on stream, it's a little bit easier to track. Um, just number of actions as opposed to special actions on top of it as well. Now, I do have this standee that I'll be using to represent myself. It's a red base for the red thing. Now, the journalist does start at the tavern as indicated on its placard. So, I'm going to find the tavern on here, which is currently here. So, on each turn, I'll be taking the number of actions per my character card. Once I complete those five actions, I then draw one monster card, resolving it depending on the monster shown. Now, for reference, I do have one of the cards here showing the different actions you can take on a turn. When you're playing as the investigator, 
you can move to an adjacent location. Uh, you can also take citizens with you. You can guide other citizens to or from an adjacent location. Kind of a push-pull effect. You can pick up any number of items in your location. Now, when I first played the original Horrified, this is a rule I easily messed up, and we initially thought you could only pick up one item per action. But you can pick up as many of the items as you want for the one action, so keep that in mind when you play this yourself. You can also share items if you're playing with additional people. You can, when you're in the same space as another investigator, you can kind of hand off items between yourselves. Uh, you can advance a challenge, uh, being one of the monster challenges, uh, by using an item at the specified location. Defeat a monster by following its unique instructions and then special actions as noted on your investigator card. So if I had a special action on here, that's one of the actions I could be taking. Now, as you can see, this is uh, American Monster, so they've kind of integrated a more Americanized map, um, kind of because uh, Bigfoot's one of the main characters in this. Uh, there's a lot of, kind of uh, both the town city and kind of expanding to the edges of the woods and the edge of the water kind of represent a lot of the U.S., but in a very generalized way. Uh, kind of up at the top, you have like abandoned mines and campgrounds, uh, the more wooded areas. Down at the bottom, you have the shore there where we have like a swimming hole and a resort and everything. Now, some of the monster cards will also have us revealing more tokens to add to the board. When that happens, I'll be pulling from this bag right here, uh, per the number shown on the card. And each one of those, which I'll show you one of these right here, has see if the lighting works, has a location at the bottom of that for where you place it. This one, for instance, said swimming hole. A lot of these will have numbers as well, so depending on the monster you're facing, those numbers may be critical to the um, for defeating the monster in some way. Now, for the most part, um, the numbers won't matter as much, uh, especially for the Banshee. It's more, okay, I need to collect the browns and the yellows Basically, I need to get my vial into the safe space, um, doing that when I'm in the same space as, a, as the moth. Or, the, no, that's the banshee, I apologize. Uh, getting in the same space as the banshee, and then using a brown or yellow turn in to roll a certain number of dice. And then it allows me to move that vial in over towards the safer section. Now, if that, my vial ever gets to the skeleton space, it's essentially like losing a life. And when you lose a life, be it yourself or one of the citizens, which I have set right off the board here. I have a couple right here, uh, which may pop out with the monster cards. When any of those are defeated, this tracker right here goes up. Now playing solo, you actually start at the number three on the track as opposed to zero. If you ever get to the skull over here, you automatically lose. So that's one way to lose. You can also lose if the monster deck runs out. But you only win if you defeat all the monsters you're playing against. So th this won't be the easiest solo game for me. Um, a, because I've never played solo in this. Um, now the Banshee, I believe, is considered an easy monster in this game. And then the or low complexity. The Mothman is considered a medium complexity. For your starting game, it actually recommends playing with two monsters. Uh, both which would have been the low complexity. So I've made it a little bit more difficult on myself, but for the most part, I understand the rules. So might as well have some fun with it and just try my best. Now, you'll also see that this token over here, the big flame that's on the monster, that's the frenzied monster. Um, that'll come up with a lot of the cards where it shows a frenzied symbol instead of a particular monster symbol. And so it makes it possible that a mo certain monster could attack more than once in a round, which we'll go over as that occurs. Now, both the Mothman and the Banshee have their own uh, unique rules for movement. Uh, the Mothman essentially will have its um, the little eye token come out to the board, and it end ends up attempting to move to that, so it may end up moving quite a few spaces. So we'll see how all that works 
as I learned this, this monster as well and how to defeat it. So what I can do now, we're just going to jump right into the game. I'm over here at the tavern. And to... Let's go verify how we arm a trap. So, when an investigator ends their movement at a location with a closed trap, they can use an activate action to arm a trap token by flipping it over. Return the specific item token for that location on the monster mat to the item bag. Mothman enters a location that has a trap and must stop its movement. So in this case, I'm already standing on a trap. Now it does say, technically it says, uh, ends their movement, but in this game you can kind of move, do something, move again. So I'm going to make the assumption that I could start and end my initial movement right here at the tavern, or in this trap. I can move to City Hall, or another trap if I really wanted to. So it gives me a little bit of buffer space against the Mothman. But also, no, I, I want to collect uh, brown, yellow, brown and yellow tokens, and then the Mothman eventually is going to need yellows. So to an extent, these blue ones won't matter as much to me, but they can essentially act as my health. Because um, if you get attacked, typically you can turn in tokens as opposed to just straight up dying. So I'll keep that in mind. The Banshee's down here, Mothman's up there. Maybe what I want to do, I might want to avoid them for the first half. Start grabbing extra tokens and then come back to where they are. Um, so I'm just going to start by arming at the tavern. And then the token corresponding to the tavern over here was the flashlight. So that comes off the board and goes into the bag. Um, and it looks like I'll need 10 plus yellow to defeat the Mothman. Uh, on the board we have a 5 yellow, 3 and a 3. If I ran around and grabbed those first, it may not be terrible. I've done one action. I'm just going to go 2, flip for 3 at City Hall. Grab this one. 4 five and pick that up and now I have a knife pretty straightforward and I'm happy enough with that for now and we'll just see what happens so let's flip a monster card and we'll see what happens so on this this is uh, the bellhop. So this is actually going to place the citizen as well. So what we're going to start with is we're going to start at the top corner, placing that number from the bag onto the board, tokens from the bag. So in this case, we're adding three tokens. I'm going to put this just right here so we can easily see it. The nice thing about this bag has a little Velcro top. It's kind of vinyl, stands up very nicely in the hand or on the table. It doesn't fall over, tip over, or spill out very much. So I'm going to draw one, two, three tokens and place them at the locations indicated on them. So first we have a pig going to town center, which is, where's town center? Down here. And then we have a toolkit found at the motel. And the motel is actually where Mothman is right now. And then a pocket knife found at the general store. And the general store is up here. So that's three of those. And then coming down the card, it says the Cross Creek citizen, the bellhop, place Sydney at the resort. So Sydney is, as you can see, same artwork. It is the bellhop. And it says to place it at the resort. Now, before I place it, you're going to see on this token has a location down at the bottom underneath. This one says motel. Now, if you safely return, 
a citizen to its desired location, then you also get to draw an additional perk card. So this is going to start at the, like the card set at the resort, which is down here. Now keep in mind, like I talked about already, these citizens can be attacked by the monster, so you want to attempt to protect them. Now if they're traveling in the same location as yourself, you can have the monster attack you instead of the citizen. So that is now one citizen I want to attempt to bring to its desired location. And then on this card, down across the bottom, it's going to have some symbols. First it shows M, which is a moth. Man symbol. So that means the Mothman is going to attempt to attack. Now at the far right of the card, it has a one footstep, which is the typical movement and number of dice you would roll. Now this is the first time I've had uh, the Mothman attack, so I'm going to verify how we do this. Because, let's see. Because we had set the eye of the Mothman near, uh, token near the monster mat, which is what we we're supposed to do. Uh, when investigated, and we've done that. Defeat slowed down. Once all four traps are armed, power the demon's eye. When a power symbol is rolled during a Mothman's attack, check to see if the eyes of Mothman's token is on the gib board. Okay. So in this case, uh, we have not rolled dice yet, so I will roll the die. That's a two dice roll. This is a single attack. Uh, if, if the token was on the game board, Ignore any hits rolled and move Mothman along the shortest possible route to the location of the eye, ignoring traps. If there's a tie for shortest route, Mothman will move along the route, as most of the assistance. If Mothman encounters any investigators assistance along that route, they will each take one hit per power symbol rolled during the attack. Okay, well, since it's not on the board, since it's, simple, since it's not on the board yet, I'm going to go by standard monster rules if it can move one. It's going to move one towards the closest investigator citizen, which was me. It would have moved this way. One. Well, technically, it wouldn't have even rolled. Okay, we, well, maybe I messed up, maybe I didn't. We'll see. People can correct me if you're watching along or watching later. I probably shouldn't have rolled that. He doesn't, should have moved and then attempted the roll. And then if the eye was on the board, it would have moved more from there. Now the second symbol on this card we drew is the fire frenzied symbol. So that means uh, the Banshee is going to attack, or attempt to attack, to move and attack. And it still has the one movement uh, to roll. Um, so it's just going to move, start moving, but it doesn't get to roll because it's not in the same space yet. Straightforward enough. I guess what I can do now is uh, start moving around, go collect tokens, and attempt to save Sydney as well. So I'm going to want those yellow pieces. Now, if I pick up a brown on the way, that helps me with the violin movement. Because if I, if I just have straight up two yellow pieces 
once I'm in the safe zone and then standing with the Banshee I can defeat it and that might be the best deal with the Banshee first I'm gonna go because I have five I'm gonna go one two three four five and pick up that ho uh, the horse so that's a brown token now and standing with the citizen to help protect it should be a useful move okay so we're going to flip the next card and the card i drew before that's a discard now the next monster card it's going to give us three tokens to the board it's actually going to add an additional system to the board so this could get tricky if we get too many systems on the board at once as there's only me to protect them okay so the three tokens we have one piece for the diner diners up here we got a goat going at the diner we have a pickaxe found at the campground and then a shovel at the town center. Now there's three things at the town center that the Banshee is also at. And then for the uh, groundskeeper, we're gonna place Abe the groundskeeper at the cemetery. The cemetery is down here. And this is not gonna be good for us. He wants to get to the stadium. The problem is the Banshee is already so close. So now we look at the bottom of that card. The bottom of that card shows in order Banshee, Frenzied, then nothing. Now first off is the Banshee. It's going to move the one which it goes towards the closest uh, investigator or citizen and it's one away so now it gets the chance to roll two two hits is more than enough because it just one hit takes out Abe which is not a good thing because we now we've lost a citizen and that immediately moves up the ooh, the meter the death or danger meter so we're already struggling here not a good sign so that was its first time and then the second one is frenzy which is the banshee so it's going to move one uh nothing to attack again so it won't roll the second time that's still a little frustrating though how fast that we immediately lost uh that citizen almost nothing we could do about it though so hopefully we can at least keep sydney protected for as long as possible now we know Cindy wants to get to the motel, which is up here. I have to go one, two, three, four. Drop off Sydney and get an additional uh, perk card. I think if that's the case, I might as well spend a perk to gain some extra pieces on my way. I do a few extra things on the way. I think what I'm going to do... I'm going to spend this perk two actions. Go one, two... So that's the car card. Now I still have five actions left. I'm gonna go pick up as many as I want for one. And go two, three, four, five. Which gets Sydney to the motel, earning me a perk card in return. And this perk card is going to be uh, advantage set a trap. Choose one, either place the uh, chupacabra at any location if it was in play. Or you have the option to move any monster three loca three locations. Which may not be bad to kind of just like push the Mothman to the opposite side of the board or something in a minute. 
Okay, but that was my full turn. Um, four, one, two, three, wouldn't be the same location. Okay, monster card. Oop, and another system. Oh my. Uh, so, first we'll add three pieces to the board. One, two, three. And we have at the general store some poison. The general store is found up here. We have a wolf found uh, prancing about the cabin. I tell me where he felt some, smelled some of that food. A pickaxe found at the ranger station. Oh, that ranger station's up here. Okay, and then the farmer. Place Josie, the farmer, at the uh, at the farm. And Josie wants to get to the swimming hole. And this is going to be another difficult situation for us. Because I had considered potentially moving the banshee towards myself and... That was a mistake to have not done that. Um, because now the Banshee's close to it again. But we go with what it shows. Now this first symbol shows the Ozark Howler, um, which is not in play, so no attacks. Then we have the Frenzied, um, being in this case the Frenzied monster is still the Banshee. Uh, it's wanting to move one, then two. And of course, we're within one uh, closest, so it's going to move towards Josie. Roll two and attempt to take out Josie, and one attack is enough to take out Josie. And we've already upped our danger meter by two in just as few rounds. And then no symbol right there, so we have uh, put ourselves in a very dangerous situation. I may need to go chase after that Banshee. Um, because I have some brown, I have some yellow, and just kind of, hey, knock them, knock them silly a bit. Um, let's see, I could go one, two, three, four, and pick up all this, which is browns and yellows. I think that's a great choice. Banshee will come after me, and then I can start spinning stuff on my next turn. So I'm just going to go one, two, three, four, five to pick up. And then do I want to move them off then? Eh, it's not too dangerous yet. Okay, so we're gonna flip over the next card. Better not be a citizen. Come on, no. Okay, so top corner, zero new tokens. Uh, the Chupacabra, the hunger. Move the Chupacabra to the closest player holding a brown token. So in this case, the Chupacabra is not in play. So this effect does not happen at all. Then across the bottom, we have the Ozark Howler, which is not in play. Next up, we have the Mothman, which is going to attempt to move three because of the, f the f uh, feet right here, which one, two, three can get to me. Get on to roll one, which would be a standard attack. Um, I can just get rid of my fishing pole because you can get rid of one of any of these uh, for each attack rolled against you, typically, to survive, which I need to survive because of how close we are over here. And then the JD symbol right here would be the Jersey Devil, which is not in play. So only one simple attack, which we were prepared for. Not too difficult at all. What I'm going to do on my turn, I'm going to move one space. And then I'm going to turn in. So part of the Banshee is at the Banshee's location. Use a brown token to roll one die or yellow to roll two. A hit or power move. If you roll a hit or a power symbol, you get to move any violin two spaces back towards the safe zone. So I'm going to turn in, so for this one action, I'm going to turn in one brown token to roll one die. Uh, no symbol, so no action. Currently I'm at two actions, so I'm going to do that again. I'm going to turn in an additional one. 
we'll roll again. That's a hit. So that allows me to move this violin back up to two spaces, which I'm now in the safe zone. And now part of the defeating the Banshee is be at the Banshee's location and use two yellows to defeat her. Um, this is only after you are in the safe zone, so I will verify per the uh, instruction uh, uh, rules book. Let me verify. So to defeat the Banshee of the Badlands, the investigators must survive the sound of the skeletal companion's violin. When an investigator is at the same location, they may spend a brown item to roll one die, or a yellow to roll two. If an investigator's violin token reaches the skeleton, they are defeated. But we are opposite the investigator reaches the violin. We didn't do. We don't need to do that. Once every investigator's violin token is in the safe zone, they may try to defeat the banshee. Being a solo, I'm the only one, but I'm in the safe zone, so we're good. So now I can ignore the scream and defeat. Investigator must be at the same location, and spend two yellow. And uh, you ignore the item's strength because it won't matter. So I'm just going to turn in two yellow. Now, grant, bear in mind, I need yellows over here. So I'm going to turn in my two lowest numbers. So that's two and the three. We have now defeated the Banshee. And the Banshee can no longer attack. Just off the board. Okay, so when a monster is defeated, it is no longer considered to be in the game. For the rest of the game, ignore all events and monster strikes that refer to defeated monsters. So you would remove the monster's figure and location overlay if they have one from the game board. Um, if the defeated monster had the frenzy marker placed on the next monster. Okay, so now the Mothman becomes frenzied because we've defeated the Banshee. And the Mothman is the only one in the game. Which is not a problem. So now let's count up what actions we did. We moved for one. We spent our first, first brown, rolled nothing. Spent another brown and rolled to hit to move over our line. We then turned in two to defeat. So we have one more action left. Um, so what I'm going to do, because I'm going, I want to move out here, but I also don't want to have run into issues with the Mothman right now. I'm going to turn in my perk card of set a trap and move any monster three locations. So I'm going to go, I'm going to move it. One, two, three. Now I have two traps ready, trap here and a trap here. So I want, I need to set both of those traps and then get the Mothman to one of those traps at the same time as myself. So I know in my fifth action, I was going to do this. I'm going to work on picking up this yellow and then go towards the top of the board for the rest of the yellows and as I set traps. Okay. So now our next monster card is going to be placing a citizen, placing uh, first off of it. We have three tokens to place and we'll be placing the teacher after I do these three tokens. Uh, token number one is going to be a walking stick found at the motel. And then a lantern found at City Hall, and a map found at the gas station, which the gas station is right here. Okay. And then the teacher. So Melvin is our teacher. Let's see if I can find Melvin. Here we go. Melvin will be placed at the high school and wants to get to the ranger station. High school. Ranger station is up here, which I'll be going to soon, potentially. Now, this is not great for us, though, because the Mothman will basically take him out immediately, unless we get really lucky with the rolls. So, we're going to first check, and there is no um, Ozark Howler, which is the green symbol down here. Next is Frenzied, so that is the Mothman. Moves one. Uh, moves one closer, which, of course, and then we roll two. Uh, okay, so now what's happened is we've this is the first time we've rolled the power symbol. So when a power symbol is rolled during Mothman's attack, check to see if the I have Mothman token is on the game board. If it is, ignore any hits rolled. 
So I'm not sure how the I symbol gets onto the board then, unless it's on one of the monster cards that comes up eventually. But um, the special effect would have been move Mothman along the shortest route. It's not there, so it can't trigger that. But it did roll a regular attack, so it does take out our Melvin almost immediately again, which is very unfortunate because now we're one away from losing this game super fast. So I need to do a lot to attract the Mothman towards me, um, towards the traps, and really go at, the, go at this fast. And then there's nothing else on this last one. Alrighty, so I could run up towards the ranger station. There's yellow there. Currently I have a five for the bait shot. There's a track up at the campground. Not enough yellow though. At the stadium there's yellow though. I could really, one, two, three, four, five, just hang out with the mothman. So then if another citizen pops out, he's more likely to attack me and stay with me. And I have tokens to give up because I don't need my brown. I could go one, two, three, four, yeah, five, or if I want one, two, three, four, five, set a trap. If he steps under, he's forced to stop moving. But I'd be there anyway, so that wouldn't make a difference. Yeah, so I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. So now he's guaranteed to attack me if a system pops out. Okay, so next card. Uh, looks like we're going to be placing two tokens on the board. So we have a pocket knife found at the gas station up here. And then a walking stick at the resort, which was down here. Okay, and so this was Banshee of the Badlands Haunted Music on the Banshee Monster map. Move one violin farthest from the skeleton, two spaces towards it. Uh, in this case, we're done with the Banshee, so that will not trigger at all, because it acts like it's no longer in the game. And then the first symbol is for a Bigfoot, which is not in the game. Uh, then the C blue color one is for the chupacabra which is not in the game and then next is mothman which can move one it's already in the same space so it rolls two um two hits on me so i can turn in two tokens i'm going to turn in the brown one which i won't need turn in the three because it's a lower number and so i've survived okay so now what i can do i could go one two three one, two, three, four. Pick up stuff at the campground, set that trap, and then hopefully lure it back. Because I still need to run over here for more yellows. And just hope that... I don't think I'm... I think I need to start setting traps over here and picking stuff up. Because if I get too far away, it's going to jump towards the citizen. So I'm going to go one two, three, pick up the sheriff station to put it back in a bag, four, five to pick up. And now I'm relatively close. There's a trap right there. And I have plenty of extra pieces to turn in uh, for attacks. Yep. Okay, oh, we're gonna add two to the board. One, two. First, there's a bear trap at the cabin. And the cabin was up here. Nice, because I needed more yellow. So that's on my way. And a baseball bat at the stadium. Okay, not too bad. Now, this is the Mothman card. Those eyes. Place the eye of the Mothman token at your current location. Fair enough. I don't mind that at all. It's going to help it beeline towards me uh, soon enough. And then the monsters that would attack this turn first would be the uh, B, which was, I've said this already, Bigfoot, then the Banshee, which is no longer in play, and then the Ozark Howler, not in play as well. So no monsters attack this round.
Very nice. Okay. I do know that the uh, Mothman will attempt to beeline towards the motel. So if I situate myself towards the intersection to the right of my motel, I may be able to draw it towards me in a minute. But I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. Set that, pick, picking up yellow. Pick this up on my way out and draw it towards one of the, these traps. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. Picking, and then that trap means I pick up this one. All four have now been uh, set. So now the rest is up to getting him to stop with me at a trap. Okay, and the card is going to be place two. That may have just done everything for me. Uh, we're going to be placing two. And then binoculars at the stadium. A pig at the bait shop. That's a different kind of bait than normal. Uh, and our bait shop is where again? Here it is, down here. Uh, place the eye of the Mothman token at your current location. So that's going to be up here with me at the campground, right where a trap is. Perfect for me. Because it's going to bring it all the way there for me. So I'm going to go one, two to pick up. Three, one, two, three, four, five. Honestly, I just want to stop there because the next round, it's well, because sorry, I skipped ahead. Uh, Bigfoot, Banshee, Ozark, how are all not in place, so they no, no attacks. I'm just gonna go one. To pick up, I have enough yellow now. Uh, th three, just go back. So I think the rule is as long as you do at least one action, or do you have to do all your actions? Which isn't a big deal because I can make it work. Yeah, investigator phase take up to the number of actions indicated. Yeah, so I'm just going to move back to the campground and be prepared for him to move. And then we get a monster card. Uh, okay, Mothman again. Uh, it adds nothing to the board. Now place the eye of the Mothman token at your location. Done. Uh, looks like Bigfoot, Banshee, Wizard Cowler. None are in play. So no movement. Oh, come on, Mothman. Make me go after you. I can just go one, two, three, four, five. So the Mothman is, if only if it rolls the indicated symbol, will it run, run through that? You know if it runs away, I can still catch up to it. Yeah, there's a trap down here I've already set. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to pick up the lantern. If anything, it'll come to me. And then, monster card. I'll add two to the board. Oh, one, two, okay. We have a torch at the swimming hole. That won't last long. A goat at the general store. I can't remember the last time I could buy a goat at the general store. Maybe if it was already uh, prepped. 
goat cheese and goat milk and such. Okay, now our attacks. Um, first, the card says Bigfoot, Rainstorm, remove all the footprint tokens from the game board and place Bigfoot at the trailhead. Bigfoot's not in play, so we ignore that. Then it'd be the Chupacabra. Now the Mothman, finally. Um, it'd move one, so it can move into our space. And then roll three dice. Okay, so attack, attack, attack. All attacks, uh, no uh, special symbol. And so it's not going to zoom over to the eye. Instead, it's just going to do three attacks against me, which I have more than enough tokens to turn in. One, two, three tokens. One, two, three. Next would be the Jersey Devil not in play. That card's done. And so then to complete and finish off the Mothman, in a location with an armed trap, which tra uh, the trap token is set, we'd spend 10 plus to defeat it. Uh, now let me make sure because the Mothman technically did move into a trap location. So I want to know if it set it off and if I would have to reset it. Once all four traps are armed. Okay, I think it doesn't say that you would have to reset it once it's triggered. Um, but even if I had to re Technically, it triggered it, trapping him here with me. But it was, I said it. It didn't say you have to reset it based on the rules. That way I could verify. But in location with an, an arm trap, which technically it's still armed because the rules don't say it, it's not armed after it triggers it. Um, turn in 10 plus yellow. And I have uh, five, four, four. That's going to be thirteen total. Yellow defeats the Mothman, and that is a win for the journalist uh, taking on both the Banshee and the Mothman. Uh, we did get one uh, away from a possible loss on our danger scale. We did have several unlucky. Um, citizen draws that ended up like right next to monsters as they came out and then those monsters triggered immediately attacking those citizens with basically nothing we could do about them after that first citizen that came out but we did save a citizen uh, we made use of the park cards we planned around all the pieces that came out eventually we won now not too too bad a win um, Played this in, what, 45 minutes? First solo game of it. Again, uh, now, nah, granted, this is supposedly an easy mode because we played two monsters. That's considered the Novus game. Now, granted, the Banshee is considered a low complexity and a Mothman medium, so not the bare minimum easiest you could play against. And it may have made it easier that my journalist had extra actions as opposed to special abilities. But overall... An enjoyable experience. A good win. And I hope you enjoyed it as well. Now, so if you haven't tried this, this is, of course, Horrified American Monsters um, from Ravensburg. It plays one to five players. Just like the original Horrified that plays up to five players. Now, this is something I do recommend for the... Uh, kind of the mid-lower count of the players. Now, it's a co-op, of course. Um, but the more players you have, the more it scales up in difficulty without changing the number of monsters. Just like, yes, you are more spread out across the board, but you're all kind of each doing something different. You have to wait longer be before your next turn, so you're kind of stuck there. You have to hope you've picked up enough to save yourself from getting attacked. Uh, when we played five players against three monsters which should have been kind of a medium level we got wrecked didn't defeat a single monster granted we didn't play against the easiest ones easy uh, either so bear in mind the monsters you pick number of players you have and a little bit of the card draw as well but as you can see it's pretty straightforward in the way it works so as long as you uh, strategize think about what you're doing your options 
it, it can be quite enjoyable. Um, it plays very smoothly once you know the rules. Uh, as you can see, each monster card basically told you which ones could attempt to move an attack, told you how much they can move, how many dice were rolled, and then the symbols that you roll, standard attack symbol, and then if they can have a special effect if you roll the exclamation point. Now, granted, we didn't roll really roll that when it mattered, so it didn't have enough effect on us. But in general, a very fun game for what I consider that fits right into the October Halloween genre. Uh, the name fits, the theming fits monsters, defeating them, uh, running away a little bit, kind of chasing them, solving a mystery. So it works very well for this time of month. So it's definitely going to be on my list of kind of top Halloween games to, to play and look forward to as this plays well both of course solo and with other players together so if you want to have a fun little game night uh, be it a Halloween party what it, what it may be you could dress up as the different monsters or the investigators you plan to play as or even the citizens in the game you just kind of have fun with it with the theming so definitely recommend this game but I do thank you for joining today um, hope you enjoyed and if you did enjoy, if you could drop a follow, drop a like, wherever you may be watching. Um, it just helps me know that you're enjoying the content and helps me plan for what to do more of, of course. Um, drop, so drop a comment. Let me know what you like about it, uh, what you want to see me play next. And I hope you have a wonderful Monday evening, a wonderful week full of gaming and full of joy. So as always... I leave you with our motto, play games and spread joy.